championship qualities and experience Newcastle have lacked so far this season. Aitken's been capped 50 times for his country and skippered them for two and a half years. He plays at the back or in midfield and gets the odd goal into the bargain. Until today, he was a one-club man, 14 years with Celtic. So was it a big wrench to leave Glasgow? Definitely a big wrench leaving Celtic. And, uh, first of all, because I'd been there for so long and I'd been I'd known nothing else but Celtic Football Club. But uh, no hesitation in coming to Newcastle United because I believe the I've got a lot to offer. Um, OK, at the moment they're in the second division, but I'm sure, uh, hopefully, I can help them get into the first division. I'm sure the potential's here to do that. Aitken makes his debut in Newcastle's home game against Leicester on Saturday. He'll captain the side. Well, Darlington's uh, United fans will be looking for an immediate display of the leadership qualities the team needs if they're to stop throwing away precious points. Roy Aitken will play in the back four with Bjorn Christensen ruled out and was immediately handed the captaincy. Aitken was training at Newcastle's Benwell ground this morning. It was his second stint with his new teammates since signing on Wednesday, but he says he already feels at home. The boys have made me all feel very welcome, and uh, I'm now looking forward to the game tomorrow. It's, uh, it's an important game for the club, and it's an important game for me. I think you, you can be guaranteed uh, quite a reception tomorrow. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that they're very passionate down here, and I'm looking forward to the game. And uh, hopefully the reception the crowd will give me before the game, I'll be able to repay them for my performance on the day. Well, a bit of Aitken fever has gripped Newcastle, and that's certain to put a few thousand on tomorrow's gate. Newcastle could do with a good result, just one league win in their last nine games. Bjorn Christensen has an ankle injury, so that rather makes it easy for Jim Smith when deciding on who will make way for Aitken. The Newcastle game is the main focus of attention making his debut against Leicester City at St James's Park. But he could never have imagined just what sort of a game it would turn out to be. It took the captain of Scotland just five minutes to stamp his presence on the game, striding out of defence before playing the ball out wide to Wayne Faraday. A good cross in, and Mark McGee is in the middle to end his personal drought just. Now United should have been on their way, but Leicester always looked lively and Tommy Wright punished some sloppy defensive work to bring Leicester level after 18 minutes. Aitken was looking the part though, releasing Kevin Dillon with a fine pass. Out comes Martin Hodge, down goes Dillon, and referee Keith Hackett says penalty. John Anderson took on the responsibility, Hodge moves, but it's still an excellent save. Anderson's disappointment only worsened eight minutes before half-time. Burridge had missed the corner, and defender Steve Walsh had moved up to punish United. But Farage soon made up for his error. The ball falls for Tommy Wright, and the United keeper beats away a crashing drive. It was certainly action all the way. Hodge, too, was keeping busy at the other end. Stimson's free kick, McGee's flick, acrobatically turned over. But United were only momentarily denied. Stimson's cross was never cleared, and when it falls for Quinn, he gobbles up the chance. Number 22, and it's all square, right on half-time. But the defensive nightmares wouldn't go away. Aitken's tackle, the ball runs loose, and the impressive Gary McAllister hits it first time, helped on by Kevin Campbell. Worse was to come as Liam O'Brien gives the ball away to McAllister. It's through for Campbell, a first-class goal. Leicester now well on top at 4-2. But stand by for a storming Newcastle revival. Three minutes later, Mark McGee opens up the defence with the neatest of turns, the hands John Carricker, Newcastle's third on a plate. All the same, United still needed Burridge to keep them alive, harming David Oldfield shot away. Then when it's worked for Gary Mills, Burridge is alert again. But it all exploded in the last four minutes. Brock's corner and Quinn is in there where it matters yet again. 4-4, but still it wasn't enough. Within a minute, an amazing game was won with another example of Mark McGee's sheer brilliance. 5-4, and the United fans can't believe it. No, for the new skipper. Oh, well, shell shock, to be honest. I mean, it's a case of you ever got us, we'll ever go at you, you ever got us. But we're delighted with the result. I mean, obviously, coming back from 4 2 down in the second half to win 5 4 is, uh, is great for the fans. I mean, that's, that's what the fans want to see. They always have excitement at Newcastle, you know. <laughs> so they say, I mean, Mickey Quinn says we're the only team that could probably do that. So uh, he's probably right there. What was the feeling at 4 2 down? Well, all credit to the lads for, for, for battling away because, I mean, maybe nine times out of ten the heads might have been down, but. 
But today it was a case of keep going, keep going, because we felt as if we still had control of the game at that time. Um, the manager obviously a bit upset at the way we lost some of the goals, but mm. uh, at the end of the day, we've scored five goals at home in front of a good crowd, and hopefully that'll bring them back in the next home game. I thought Mark McGee had an excellent game, particularly the way he took the winning goal. Well, a great turn. I mean, typical Mark McGee goal, holding the ball up, turning the defender, and sticking away with his left foot. So, um, yeah, great to get that one. I thought the five goals were good, put it that way. <laughs> it must have been great to watch because it was end to end stuff. Uh, that, that could be anything after them in the Premier League, I must admit. Um, I don't know if they'll all be like that, but uh, Leicester are obviously on a high. They've won seven out of the last eight games. That's their first defeat for a long time. So, I mean, we're delighted. And a great start for you. Three points, that's the main thing. And Newcastle a seventh after that win, but five clubs.